your good. Just as the ingredients that the potter puts together in the clay to put on the wheel, He will work all of those things to mold you and form you and fashion you in the likeness that He wants. Yeah. Amen. Right. God is still God in the valley. Amen. 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 God is still God in the valley. And no matter how dry you feel, Come on. no matter how dead you feel, right. and you feel like those little dry bones, and we learned last week that when the Spirit of God moved on those old bones, yeah. and the Word of God came forth over them, mm -hmm. that they begin to live again. Oh, right. Amen. They begin to come back together. Have you ever felt like your life was just scattered? Broken in so many pieces, you couldn't never be able to put it back together. Yeah. Thank God for the master builder this morning. Amen. Who puts it all back together. And he works it all for Brother Bill Willis's good. Amen. All right. Listen, even the bad choices you made in life, if you'll put them in the hands of God, he can use them for your good. Right. You can learn lessons from that, that's for your good. Amen. Amen. You can learn things from the trials that you go through, that's for your good. Right. He teaches us in the valley. We learn from David. In Psalms, the 23rd chapter, He said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. All right. Amen. He said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. We learned that there's rest in the valley. All right. He leadeth me beside the still waters. We learned that there's revelation in the valley that you, like you'll never get anywhere else. Amen. Yeah. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Amen. Yeah. He leads me. If I'm in the valley and I'm if I'm following him and I'm in the valley, apparently he must have led me there. Right. Amen. It's the same God that we were praising yesterday is the same God we're kicking against today because things ain't going our way. Right. The Bible says in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Amen. In everything give thanks. But Brother Billy, that's just in the good times. No, that ain't what it says. It says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. When things are going good, yeah. you're going to have to show me your version because that ain't what mine says. All right. In all things, Brother Sleese, that means whenever things happen that Brother Sleese don't like, still, he's supposed to give thanks. Right. Whenever people rub him the wrong way, whenever people don't do him right, uh -huh. he's still supposed to give thanks. Right. We are still supposed to realize today that as bad as the situation seems, if we will put it in the hands of God, hallelujah, right if we will put our faith and trust in Him, that He will work all of this mess, all of this that we think is a mess, yeah. He will work all of it together for our good. Right. And we will be better off when we come out on the other side of the tunnel than we were when we went in on the other side. Amen. Amen. Because there's a lot of things in there that God has for you. Right. He's going to restore your soul. But you've got to look for it. You got to feed upon it. Yeah. He said he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Where at? In the valley. He's going to prepare a table. He's going to give you something to eat, but you got to eat it. He ain't going to force feed you. Amen. He's going to prepare a table before you, and he's going to give you word, brother Bill. And he's already given you word. He's already prepared the table. This is it right here. This is the table he's prepared right here. This is the meat. This is the bread. This is that which He has already given you for you to be able to make it through the valley. All right. he, the Bible says, David said, His rod and His staff, they comfort me. We learn how that applies to the Word of God. How that whenever we're in the valley, His rod and His staff, His Word, they comfort us. Yeah. It feeds us. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. But we're too busy looking at the enemy. Yeah, we're too busy looking at, Brother Slee said last week, we're too busy looking at the wolves that are circling. We're too busy looking at the enemy that's closing in instead of getting our eyes on God's Word and realizing that all things work together for my good. I can't tell you the times that I've went through valleys in my life and I've just had to say, God, I don't understand it. I do not like it. You know I don't like it, but but, amen, I know that I know that I know that you are still God and that all things work together for my good if I hold on to you. Hallelujah. Right. We're talking about going through the valley. Amen. Talking about how God provides there. Yeah. And we talked last week how that God provides you food. Right. He prepares a table like that song that we sung. Mm -hmm. He often lets me 
sit at his table, you know, and all the enemy can do is watch me eat. Amen. He don't mind it at all if you're in the valley and he sees you reaching for the TV guide. Matter of fact, he probably likes that. Can I do some old-fashioned preaching this morning? Amen. He probably likes that because he knows you're getting ready to feed on something that ain't of God. Amen. He don't mind it at all when you're going through the valley if you reach over there for your Harlequin romance book. Amen. He don't mind it at all if you reach over there for your true story. I don't even know if they still make those. <laughs> Amen. He don't mind it at all if you reach over there for Joel's best life now. Because there ain't no word in that anyway. Amen. Get the book. Search for some scriptures. Come on. There ain't no word in there. That ain't going to get you nothing. He don't mind it at all. You can read that all day long. But when he sees you go over there to the corner... And dig out from underneath the TV guide and the, the comic books. And he sees you reach down and get that old leather bound Bible. Hallelujah. And he sees it. He says, well, wait a minute. Let me see. If it says NIV, I ain't too worried about it. Oh, no. It's one of them King James versions. He sees you go over and get a hold of your Bible and begin to open it up. Then he gets worried because then he knows that God is preparing a table before you, before you in the presence of your enemy. Amen. And he knows that if you get a hold of the right scripture, hallelujah, one little jot or tittle out of this book is enough to take down the kingdom of hell because God's word is eternal and everlasting. Amen. Amen. That's true. He prepares a table before me. So he don't mind it. You know, you can grab you can grab the latest bestseller. You can get Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. He don't care. Read that mess. Amen. He don't care if you're reading some of the latest best selling Christian so called books on the market. But when he sees you grab the word of God, he gets worried. Because we're learning that in the valley, God has prepared, he has made provision for you. That's what David taught us in the 23rd Psalm, that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right. He spreads his banquet table Amen. for us. Amen. Yeah. The children of Israel, you remember them over there in the wilderness? They're complaining. They're hungry. Yeah. It's dry. You don't see nothing around. Nowhere to eat. You ever been there before? Right. You're hungry. You haven't gotten fed. You feel like you're just starving. You, you feel like you're drying up, drying up. I've heard I've had people tell me over the years, I just feel like I'm drying up. I, I, I haven't had any, I haven't felt the Lord. I haven't, I haven't gotten anything from him. Come on. Children of Israel over there in the middle of the wilderness and nothing, you know, they can't find anything. And they're complaining. You know, they ain't they're like us. They 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 were like us. They they wasn't one of those that thought, you know, God has us here. Bless His holy name. We've got nothing to eat today. No, they complain like we do. So they're out there complaining and murmuring and wondering, what are we going to do? Has God brought us out here to starve us to death? Had somebody tell me this past week, he said, I think God just brought me here and forgot about me. Listen, this ain't no strange thing we've been talking about. Every one of us. The Bible says, think it not strange, you know, concerning the fiery trials. Yeah. Oh, we do. We think, what's going on? We know what's going on. The Bible already tells us these things are going to happen. Amen? Right. These things must come to pass. But anyway, the children of Israel out there and it's in the wilderness and it's dry and they're thinking they're hungry. They need something to eat. And all of a sudden, they start seeing something. What is that? Is it going to rain? Wait a minute. That, that, ain't, that ain't wet. It's manna. Amen? They begin to eat on it. That heavenly bread. Same thing will happen to you if you look forward in the valley. God has made provision. God will rain down. We, just, we serve the only God in the history of mankind that's ever done that kind of miracle. Right out there in the wilderness, rain down manna from heaven. Thirsty! Well, that's all right. We'll smite a rock and get us a stream going. Amen? All right. Our God is a God of provision. Amen? Amen. He will provide for you. Yeah. Right in the valley. Well, you tell us that for, Brother Billy, we know this, but we don't act like it. We don't act like we know it. Because we spend more time complaining than we do blessing His name. Amen. Oh, yeah. We spend more time kicking against Him than we do saying thank you, Jesus, whenever things ain't going our way. Right. Oh, it ain't no big deal. You can find Sister Nancy praising the Lord and shouting the victory when things are going good. Amen. When things ain't, 
That's whenever we need to take our temperature. That's whenever we need to find out, hey, do I have enough to make it? Is what I've got really real? Is my faith in the provider or in the provisions? Amen? What about this? What is my faith in God or just in the blessings that He gives? Because if He cut us off today, none of us would have a right to complain. None of us. Amen? Because He's already given us more than we ever deserved. So how many can see this morning how that God is showing us in His Word that He prepares something for us for the valley? Amen. That He provides for us for the bill? Amen. That He has something there for us to feed upon? Something for us to get strength? Something for nourishment? <clears throat> something to provide for us whenever it seems like that there is no provision? God is there providing. Amen? He's already made a way where there seems to be no way. When he told the prophet to get up from the dried brook, amen, he had already prepared a little widow woman down in Zarephath to give him something to eat down there, amen. God always makes provision for his people. The Bible says that he, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. Whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're in the valley, God is going to provide for you. Leviticus, the 19th chapter and the 10th verse, and this is what I didn't get to last week. Leviticus 19 and 9, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Leviticus 19 and 9. And I might lose you here, not that I ain't lost you already. Some of you look like you just going to be sitting at the house eating pizza. One of these days, when you're sitting at the house eating pizza, you'll wish you to listen whenever the preacher was preaching on Romans 8 and 28. Amen. You're going to need the Word to make it. The Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You can't endure without the Word. Amen. The Word preserves you. Amen. The Word will feed you. The Word will strengthen you. The Word will help you make it through times that you would not make it through on anything else. You can't live on the feeling, Brother Bill. Amen. But you can live Amen. on His Word. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Oh, but I'd love to feel it and jump the pew. Well, that's great. I do too. But you ain't always going to feel it and jump the pew. And you ain't going to be able to live on that. Right. You live on His Word. Amen. Right. Whenever it's dark and it's black and it's dry and you feel half dead, yeah. you live on His Word. Because then you don't feel like jumping the pew. Come on. Then you don't feel like rolling in the floor. All right. But if you get a hold of His Word and realize that it's for you and it's real and it's forevermore established, you can live on that. Amen. You can live on the promises of God. Amen. Right. Listen to this. I'm going to lose you here if you don't stay with me. Leviticus 19 and 9. Instructions on how they were to reap their harvest. It says, And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. Now let me tell you what this means. This means whenever they harvested their crops, they did it in a circle. And they left the four corners for something set aside that God had especially for that. And if they left some behind, you know, whenever they did the harvest and there was some of the corn or whatever it was they were harvesting, there was some of it left behind. They were not to go back and pick that up because God had something special for that, Sister Nancy. Harvest your field in a circle and leave the corners. And He's going to tell them why. And thou shalt not glean the vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor. 